Hey everybody, Looks Into Swirl here. We are going to try something a tiny bit different, but it will involve paint pouring. We are going to pour on a couple of craft brown paper bags that I got at Dollar Tree. These are gift bags. For now, I'm only going to pour on this side. If it goes well, then I may bring you back and we'll figure out how to pour on the other side. But I just want this is sort of a test because I've never poured on this sort of surface before. I have these held up off the paper by these little jello shot cup tops. Links for everything will be below. These are 7 by 10, 7 by 10. So if we were doing a paint pouring onto a canvas, we would need about four and a half ounces. But since we're not, I'm going to go for a, around four ounces or a little bit less. These are five ounce cups, so I won't fill them up all the way, maybe to this top line here, or top ridge. I want to try two different color palettes. So for the left one here, these are all going to be deco art, fluid art, ready to pour acrylics. I'm going to use deep turquoise, bright violet, and true red. And then over here, I'm going to go with real Easter pastels, mint green, pink, sky blue, and bright yellow. After we have the paint poured on and tilted so there's full coverage of the paper, I am also going to try sprinkling on a little bit of complementary color glitter. This would be complementary to the turquoise paint. This is Collections, or sorry, Recollections, a Michaels brand in, let's see, Peacock. And then uh, also because I'm using True Red, I was going to also a sprinkle on a little of my new Cherry Bomb glitter from uh, SOC Glitters on Etsy. I'll link all of this below. Over here on the pastel bag, I was going to sprinkle on a little, again, Recollections from Michaels. This is blush, pink. And uh, to go with the yellow, this is Peachy Olive Glitters in Duckling. So we'll just see. We'll just see what we get. I will bring you back after we're done doing all of this today to see how it dries because that will be a significant part of whether this is deemed successful or not. If it all wrinkles up and, I don't know, looks weird after it dries, then I may not continue with the project. If it dries well and looks good, I will then continue by turning over and then seeing what we have to do to, to glitter this side, which is a little more complicated. We could probably open it up. I don't need to glitter the bottoms. Open it up and do this side like this with something inside of it to hold it open. That's a possibility. We'll deal with that later. Let's see what we get here first. So I have my two five ounce cups. I'm just gonna layer some paint. And then we're gonna do a pour. I'm gonna do one bag at a time just to, there's no competition between the two. So let's see what we get. Let it drain. All right. I'm just going to push that off to the side for now. So here we go. It's a traveling tree ring. Before I get some runoff here, let's just go ahead. Now this is going to be a little trickier to tilt than a canvas. It's not stiff. 
it's a little bit stiff because it's thick craft paper, but it's not, it's not as solid as a canvas would be. one in no particular order again. That should be more than enough. All right, here goes this one. Again, traveling tree run. We'll start in a different corner. And now we tilt again. This is definitely more eastery. Both of these look absolutely gorgeous. Well, let's try some of the glitter. I don't know quite how I, I was going to sprinkle it on, but I may swap my glitter choice here. I may not, well, red and violet are more predominant. Let's see if I have a, does that look? That's pretty close. All right, let's try this. This is boltglitters.com, ultra fine. I'm just going to pinch a little. My red cherry bomb. This has some chunkies in it. I'm going to try and get There's some chunky. So I picked out pink, but that has almost completely disappeared. The yellow is good. Let me see if I have a light blue. All right, we're going to go with Cold Shoulder from Glitter Chimp, which is a chunky blend, and the duckling. So I'll do the duckling first. Let's go in for our close-up and then I'll bring you back tomorrow. Unfortunately, you can't really see the sparkle. Let's see if I do this. There's the sparkle. I'll do the sparkle first. Good and sparkly. Okay, now let's look at the paint. It's the bottom of the bag and we're just going to go up to the top. I love the pour. And of course the lines. Okay, there's the Easter bag. Now let's take a look at whatever holiday this might represent. <laughs> First, let's see if we can get the sparkle. Some of it. 
Okay, now the paint. From the bottom to the top. Really beautiful. I think I'm going to try doing uh, pores on a canvas with these same color choices. That could be just gorgeous. All right, let's see if I can get both of them in frame. All right, everyone, stay tuned. We'll come back and see how it all dries. Hey folks, we're back. Okay, so as you can see, these are our two bags as we left them. They may have switched sides, I forget. <laughs> I think the pastel one was over here and vice versa. But anyway, I put these aside to dry and I made a couple mistakes when I did that. I left them sitting on the little top caps for the two ounce jello shot cups I have. And I left them sitting on these with the wet paint on the other side. When I put them back down after I tilted, there was paint on these. I let the bag sit on them. The paint soaked in and started to dry around the edges. And unfortunately, what that meant was when I tried to turn the bag over to let the backs dry, entire chunks, this one's even worse. <laughs> you can see what happened. I just, you know, it was one of my usual cases of not thinking things through all the way. Uh, somehow I thought this wouldn't happen. Go figure. So, having learned from that, because we still have these two beautiful sides and maybe beautiful pieces of paper now, basically, but the bags are completely, completely unusable. They are just unusable. Okay, so... In an effort to learn from my mistakes, I would like to try again with a couple changes. And here's what I'd like to do. I have two more bags. These aren't, they're, the, they're both from Dollar Tree, same section, same size, uh, but these have been colored by the manufacturer. They come, instead of craft paper brown, with no color on them at all, like the last bags were. These have been colored, and they're also a different paper. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to approach how the bags are positioned and how they dry a little differently. Um, as you can see, for this one, I've, I've tried to expand it all so the paint will flow down the sides and nothing's None of these little crinkly spots are tucked in to not get coverage. I want coverage. And it's, it's up off the base. And the handles are tucked in, so they shouldn't get wet at all. And the paint will then drip down the sides, like when we pour over a vase that's sitting up on a cup. Everything should drip off, and it will dry. <clears throat> However, it will not look like this because it won't be lying flat. So we won't get the pattern like we had poured on a canvas. We will get something more akin to when we pour over the bottom of a jar and it drips down the sides. Now this isn't a bad thing at all, but it will look different than this. So in an effort to get something more like what we had before, but without um, the problem on the back and the disintegration factor and all that, as soon as I'm done tilting the paint and adding the sprinkles, I am going to move this and put it on something else that's up farther off, off the surface that will sit right in the middle of the back because the middle of the back was basically, in both cases, free of wet paint. So if I do this right, <laughs> <laughs> and have some luck. It will rest on something that has no paint on it. There won't be paint where it's resting. And what's on top will dry like this last time. If we're lucky, it'll come out looking something like this and uh, there won't be any damage to the back. That's what, that's what I'm shooting for in this one. So let's get to it. This may take more paint, so I'm gonna fill this up a little further than I did last time.
All right, so I'm gonna pour. We are attempting for full coverage on all four sides. So this won't be any sort of great tree ring or anything. This will be me trying to get paint down all four sides. Traveling tree ring, is that what that's what we did? Definitely flimsier than the craft paper bag. A flimsier paper. what I'm using this time. You see that? Yeah, I'm not really getting good placement. That's all right. I just wanted to give you a close up of how our freshly poured bags look. <laughs> this one seemed like such a great idea when I came up with it, but honestly, I'm not sure how the finished drive version is gonna look. If it would be something that somebody would want a gift in. I mean, I think it's pretty, but you know, we'll see how it turns out. I just wanted you to see what it looks like up close. Here is this side. And then here, is our very wet floppy <laughs> flat bag resting on that foam piece that I showed you. All right, bring you back to see how it dries. You know what, I think, <laughs> I think when all is said and done, I love the idea of this project, but I am, I am gonna call it a fail. Uh, this was our, my second attempt, I'm not going to involve you in this, <laughs> except to watch. This was my second attempt on the flat bag. Again, I think this side turned out great, just like the other, the, the first two I did, uh, but the back was ruined. Uh, in this case, I managed to keep the back dry. It doesn't look like it here, but it was dry. However, the runoff effectively glued the flap on. And when I tried to loosen the flap, even though I was so careful and I tried to use an X-Acto knife and everything, it just, once the paper's wet, even when it dries after being wet, it's just not the same anymore and this just came apart. And then I tried to unstick the ropes and that came apart. And now this is all sealed up and I just, I love the idea, but I just don't think Pouring paint on these is going to work. 
I will keep thinking about it, I will, because I, I would love to see this be successful somehow. It may just require a different kind of bag. It may require a bag that's somehow partially plastic or something and not uh, paper. Because paper gets wet and then it, it, is, it is a done deal. Uh, with this one, <laughs> I wanted to move it uh, off the base I had it on. So I picked it up by the edges where there weren't any paint drips and it, it's so uh, bottom heavy because of all the paint that it twisted out of my hands. The paper ripped. Now that's a minor thing. I could take that shut. But when it ripped and tipped out of my hands, it fell into the puddle of paint left over from this one. So now the bottom is that kind of mess. And even then I said, well, you know, I could put a sticker over it. It'll be fine. But truth be told, if you look closely next to all the drips, the water seeps into the into the paper. Again, it's a it's just a an issue of the medium I chose to use to paint onto. I just need some sort of tougher material than this paper or the craft paper that the first bags were were made of. I mean, I, that's actually kind of cool, the interior, but I I don't think the exterior looks all that great. And if I had gotten complete coverage, like I did at this end of the bag, I'm not sure, well, let's see. Let's see how the inside looks, yeah. I mean, again, that's that's kind of cool looking, maybe. I don't know, I just, I just don't think these bags hold up to being painted with pouring paint. And I think maybe painting Mod Podge on and then doing glitter would be a much better way of doing this without pouring the paint over it. That's just my opinion. Please, if you have had success with something like this project, leave a comment below in the comments section and let me know what you did that I didn't do, or advice you have, or suggestions, or tips, or if you had the same final conclusion I'm coming to, which is that these bags just don't hold up well enough. Like I said, I will keep thinking about this, and if I can think of a way to try another another way to get a paint pour on a gift bag, I will come back and show it to you. But for now, I'm calling it a fail. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.